Skype or Viber or WhatsApp. But now, in an instant, if you want to help, especially financially, you just, uh, with, a, with a click of a mouse, uh, you can send it online uh, banking or online Western Union or you just go in the uh, uh, remittance shop and once you remitted it within few minutes that person on the other side of the world can receive immediately the help they need. Many Filipinos have cellular phones and at least we could offer a simple phone call or text to ask help for somebody or the attitude of apathy has carried over into our churches. We need a revival of compassion in our lives and in our churches. The book of Jude begins by the, declaring the faithfulness of God and the character of His care for His saints. This is the reflection of the prayer of Jesus in John chapter 17 when Jesus prayed for the saints. The book of Jude then follows with a warning about the touch of ungodly or the influence of the ungodly. And it follows the story about the uh, fall of Adam, Adam and the rejection of Cain and uh, the slain of Balaam, one of the prophets, and the uh, uh, fall of uh, Korah or Kore, of which Korah or Kore was uh, one of the uh, ministers in the, in, in, the, uh, in the temple. He's the one who is carrying the censer of fire. For us today, as a believer of Christ, we are not exempted into falling down. But as we read Jude, at the last verses, it says in there, verse 20, 24 and 25, we have the assurance that God is able to keep us from falling. God is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before His presence. In Jude chapter 10, verse, uh, verse 10 and 13, it talks about the characters of the ungodly or the ways of the ungodly. Uh, you can uh, take note the verses and uh, when you go home, you can uh, read them. And sometimes these characters or these uh, attitudes of the ungodly Sad to say, sometimes it is being it, 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 it was being manifested even in the lives of believers. Ito po yung nakakalungkot. Sometimes we are like them. But in verse 20 and 22, there are four excellent examples or exquisite admonitions in which the book of Jude mentioned. One is in verse 20 and 22, it says, But ye, beloved, building up yourself, yourselves and your most holy faith, we should build up our, our faith, our holy, our, our holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Verse 22, 21 says, Keep yourselves in love of God, in the love of God, and looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. These are excellent admonition that, uh, that the, the book of John mentioned and it's worth pondering of. Going back to our text, in verse 22, it says, And some have compassion making difference. The praise and some have compassion is not intended to teach that we were not to have compassion for all people or we should be choosy or we should be selective or to regard the salvation 
with all of all with solitude. But instead, this praise teaches us, teaches us that we were to have a special or unusual compassion for a certain group of people. Now, who are this special group of people? We can categorize them as those who are hard-headed. Siguro ito yung mga may magagaling. No? They can interpret their own the scriptures and apply it according to their own uh, satisfaction. Another group are those who are timid or those who never have the ability or the uh, uh, the uh, yeah the ability to interpret it. And so they are rely relying on people who are uh, able to interpret for them. Like for example, uh, when you come for a doctrine class, there are statements in the Bible that sometimes it confuses us. But when the uh, teacher or the uh, uh, pastor explain it verse by verse and he will show us the supporting verse, then that's the time that we can then interpret it or understand it. So the praise and some have compassion is an idea that is especially that is a special feeling to be manifested toward a certain group of people in seeking their salvation in a way that is tender and kind and is full of affection. We were to approach this group in the gentle, in the gentlest manner, appealing to them by such word as love. When we come to people to share the word of God, we should be doing it because we love them the way God loves them. That should be our basis or our standard. Other group were to be approached in a different manner, indicated by the praise in the preceding verse, in verse 23, says, save with fear. The direction then amounts to this, that while we are to seek to share the gospel so that they, should, they, they will be saved, we are to adapt ourselves wisely to the characters and circumstances of those whom we are going to share the gospel. We should adapt in the situation. There is no, uh, there is no specific uh, uh, formula or single formula in which we can address every situation or every need of those whom we are sharing the gospel. The general meaning of this praise or this exhortation is supposed to be we are not to deal like with all those who have been seduced by false teacher. So they should be approached with different kind. By presenting the truth in the gospel, and we are to make difference between those who have been led away by the weakness and imprudence and the cunning works of our enemy and to those in the pride and arrogance of their heart and their willingness to submit to the wholesome discipline and that have separated themselves from the church. So we will approach differently. Making a distinction between them, not in the regards of our desires, of our desires for their salvation, or our effort to save them, but to the manner in which it is done. <coughs> the young and the tender, delicate and refined, need a different kind of treatment from the rough, the uncultivated, the hardened, the callous heart. This wisdom was shown by the Savior in all his preaching, and we can see also this wisdom being applied by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, chapter 9, verses 19 to 22. Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 to 22, it says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that at that I may gain 
the more. And unto the Jews I become a Jew, as a Jew, that I might gain the Jew. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law. Being not without law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. Verse 22, To the weak became as I weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. See the strategy of Paul. He is adapting unto the situation and applying the word of God. Compassion, being compassionate to the lost. Having compassionate, have having compassion to the needy. The word compassion in the in the New Testament comes from came from the Greek word l -e l -e -l, which means uh, to be compassionate or to be merciful. And in the Old Testament, it came from the Hebrew word rakum, which have the same meaning as in the Greek word. To be compassionate, to be merciful. And this word was used in the Bible in the sense of active compassion. It is a compassion at work. Compassion is a deep awareness of the condition of another coupled with the least wish to relieve it. Compassion is a deep awareness of the condition of another coupled with the wish to relieve it. We can see a lot of biblical example about compassion. First is the story about the prodigal son. Uh, I think all of us are aware in this story. If we, if you try to read that story, uh, later on we can see in our study that, uh, that there was no precondition in which the uh, father made in order that his son would return to him. And the second biblical example is the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan is a response, was a response from Jesus to a certain lawyer. Pag lawyer, pag sinabi nating lawyer, hindi naman siguro tatawagin abogado yan kung uh, pares, lang, pares lang ni Brother Mark. No? Hindi kami pala. Lawyer. So he is a master of law. Kung ako siguro, wala pa ako sa katiting niya. No? And uh, Jesus told this story about the Good Samaritan. When that lawyer came to him, he said, Master, what shall I do to have eternal life? And Jesus answered to him, uh, What does the law say? How does it does? And that lawyer says, uh, The law says, Love the Lord your God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy strength, thy mind. And the last one, he said, And thy neighbors as thyself. But he want to catch Jesus. And he said, Who are my neighbors? And in response, Jesus told the story about the Samaritan, the good Samaritan. <coughs> There were three char four characters in there. First is the priest, and the second one is the Levite. This priest and Levite, they belong to the same, uh, actually they belong to the same uh, uh, Israelite tribes. They are actually on the uh, line of, lineage of Levi. And the third one is a Samaritan. A Samaritan is a half-bred or half Jew and half non-Jew. They are like, uh, kung sa, baga sa atin, parang Phil Am, or Phil Canadian, Phil, Phil Arabi. It's like, uh, they were mixed race. And so, the Jews are not expecting 
and it is a uh, uh, it is unusual thing for a Samaritan to help a Jew because they they don't they, they were treated just like a second class citizen in their country and the second then the third example is uh, the person of our Lord Jesus Christ he had compassion you have references in there in Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 that when Jesus saw the multitude that they were fainting and scattered abroad and they were like just sheep without a shepherd he had compassion on them in Matthew chapter 14 verse 14 Jesus had compassion and he healed the sick in Matthew chapter 15 verse 32 Jesus had compassion on the multitudes and so he fed, he fed the four thousands plus the children and the wives in Mark chapter 1 verse 41 he had compassion on the sick and he made the leper clean in Mark chapter 5 verse 19 Jesus had a compassion and a demon possessed man and he healed that man and so on and so forth Jesus is the greatest example of compassion Amen. the purpose of his life was compassion he lived for it the cross was all about compassion why because man was lost and we are on our way to hell that is the awesome condition awful condition of men our direction is toward hell towards perdition but there is one man and that man has a compassion and can do anything for a lost man to be saved that is in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ we praise God that Jesus is not like the priest or the Levite who just passed by the wounded travelers but indeed Jesus showed the compassion to all sinners it cost him his life but now anyone who, can, who trusts him can go to heaven when they die the condition is you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord or as your Savior now we can see a lot of uh, uh, Bible references also that uh, speaks about the uh, compassionate character of our Lord. Some, most of them can be seen in the book of Psalms. You can see them in Psalm chapter 145 verse 8, Psalm chapter 86 verse 15 and so on. The Lord is truly uh, very showy on how He uh, he manifested his compassion towards us. Now we have three points to ponder. Number one is compassion requires what is that H and S? Hard work and sacrifice. Parang nagagawa yata ng leakage tungo si sister namin. Hard work and sacrifice. Going back to our Biblical example a while ago about the Good Samaritan. Ano ang ginawa niya? Hard work and sacrifice. Do you think that that Samaritan is just passing passing by that area na walang gagawin, na walang ibang gagawin? I think he has or he or she has she must have an appointment. That Samaritan sacrifices his time whatever that appointment that he or she will be having that day sacrifice his time not mentioning the uh, time that he spent or she spent in sending that uh, wounded traveler to the inn and the second thing is the second one that it was sacrificed in here is talent the good Samaritan pledge to pay all what is being spent on that wounded traveler and the third one is his treasure 
our time, our talent, and our treasure so that we can have the truth, compassion. compassion. We can have or we can achieve or we can uh, imitate the real compassion that God wants us to learn. It requires our effort. There is no instant, uh, instant compassion. It requires our effort. It requires uh, practice on it. And so when the time will come and you will see a brethren that is in need, that compassion that was nurtured in our heart will come out naturally. It will become a natural response. Those who care enough to be compassionate must be willing to take time from their schedule, comfort from their body, and money from their wallet to help those who in need. It did not just, re it did not just uh, involve money for the Good Samaritan to be compassionate and the wounded traveler, but in, it involves everything. It involves himself. He did not ask for a substitute or his servant, or he did not hire anyone to show the first, to, to show compassion when he saw, when, immediate, when he immediately saw the wounded traveler. He himself, or he herself, she herself was involved in showing compassion to that wounded traveler. It involves our whole, our, our whole, our whole self. You remember last time, uh, I think one Sunday, I preached about obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And uh, up to now, I've been meditating about what, uh, the, the, the sacrifice that uh, Abraham made to God. Was it the substance or was it Isaac being the substance of the sacrifice please God? And it reminds me the life of uh, the life of Saul. He gave the sacrifice but God was not pleased. And it reminds me about obedience. Why? Because giving your sacrifice, sacrifice is just a portion in our lives. Our money, that may be a, it has an impact. Our treasure, our time, that is just a portion of our life. It does not involve us everything. But our obedience, it involves our heart. It involves the full submission of will of the heart to God. Because you cannot obey God if you will not fully submit unto Him. That is why when Abraham offered his son Isaac, God was pleased. And God did not just show the substance of the sacrifice, but the substance of the heart of Isaac, of, of Abraham. He saw the submission of the heart of Isaac unto the command of God. That is all what obedience means. Romans chapter 12 verse 1, what does it say there? I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Anong sabi niya doon? That you present your bodies. That you present your bodies. And that is what Abraham did. He did not only present it, Isaac. But he presented his whole heart being submissive unto the will of God in his life. And so God was pleased. And Romans 12 verse 1, I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies holy, acceptable, pleasing. And this is our this is our acceptable sacrifice unto God. 
Our lives can never be pleasing if we are not submissive in our heart and the will of God. Amen. We must have the effort. We must work hard. We must sacrifice. And this is part of our compassion. The second thing is, compassion is a perfect blend of T and L. Truth and love. Truth and love. Truth and love. Si Bernal naman ang nakakuha ng leakage ngayon. Truth and love. Palagi po nating naririnig ito. Sabi po ni Pastor, love without truth causes compromise. Or truth without love causes cruel, cruelty. Love and truth together create compassion. Just like what we can read, when, what we can read in John chapter 1 verse 14. It just says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The last part says, full of grace and truth. Being compassionate is to be done with clarity of the intention of the heart. Why? Because God judges the attitude of the heart. God examines our motives. God knows if we have hidden agenda in showing compassion to others or not. It really matters what is the attitude of our heart. So compassion is a perfect blend of truth and love. Number three, compassion is you. You, universal. Compassion is unconditional. Going back to Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 20, this is again the story of the prodigal son. We can see, we can see in there that the compassion of the father is unconditional. When the prodigal son came to in his, in his senses and realized the misery that he has, then he said to himself, my, in my father's house, there's a lot of uh, food. And so I will go back to him. And like, he's planning to go back. And then the following verse, the prodigal son went. And while he was still far away, the father saw him. And you know what? The next thing that happened was the father ran towards him run towards his prodigal son, embrace him, and kiss him. And he was very joyful to that. The father did not even ask the son, why have you done this? Or he did not even set the condition for him to love again his son. That is exactly what Jesus did to us on the cross. Wala naman siyang utang na kasalanan, di ba? Tayo naman yung nagka-utang. Kung tutusin, God is a lot of reason not to do that, but because of His compassion to the lost sinners. He was willing to die to pay for the penalty of our sins. Compassion is unconditional. It should not be a response or an action to earn praise of men. It should be a natural response of a true believer to anyone who genuinely need our help or compassion. Biblical compassion cares even if the needy is a victim of his own tidings. Too often we ignore someone who has fallen on hard times because they cause it. But we should keep in mind that if we all got what we deserve, we'll all be in hell. It is our fault, but Jesus is still hell. Compassion. Amen. <clears throat> Whether it be a Believer or not, this attitude 
should always be manifested in our lives. Being compassionate. Kasi ang nangyayari minsan, we are very juicy. We think uh, we, can, we, we can choose whom we want to show uh, our mercy or our compassion, even if we already uh, seeing that uh, men or women, that they are really in need of someone to help them. But again, always think about our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He never sinned, but you and me sinned. He died because He has compassion on us. Since compassion was the driving force in the life of Jesus Christ, then the Christian whose goal is to be like Him must to follow the same. We must have that heart of compassion. If we have no compassion, we are not Christ-like. Compassion makes the difference. The difference between the churches and the Christian and Christians who care for the people is compassion. Being merciful. We must have that kind of heart. Others may not care, but we should always care. In 1st John chapter 3 verses 16 to 17 says in here whereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren but who so hath this world's good but and see it his brother have need and shut it up his bowels of compassion from him how dwelleth the love of God in him? This is just like the story or the comparison that Jesus mentioned in the book of Matthew. That if you are only doing good to those who are doing good to you, we are just like also we are also this uh, we are we are also like the sinners because they do the same. If we love only those who love us, we have no difference also with the sinners because they do the same also. Man. But we, if we have compassion, or we have love, or we have mercy unto all, then that makes a big difference in us. 1 John chapter 3, verse 17 says, But whoso hath this world's good, and see it, his brother had need, and shut it up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? In closing, I would like to quote yung sinabi ko ni Ralph Waldo Emerson. Ralph Waldo Emerson, I think he is a famous uh, poet. Sabi ko niya, the purpose of life is not only to be happy. Do you believe in that? The purpose of life is not only to be happy. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to help it make some difference that you help live and live it well. Nakuha niyo po? The purpose of life is not only to be happy. Of course, we need also to be happy. But what I'm saying, we should not only live to be happy. Our life should also be useful and should be honorable. The last thing he mentioned is our life should also be a compassionate life so that in the end, we may live a life, a life that is lived well. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that uh, you are continually teaching us, Lord, the characters that you want to build in our lives. Lord, we pray that uh, may you continue then to empower us, to help us, Lord God, uh, walk in your ways. 
and build us, Lord God, that character of being compassionate, especially, Lord God, to our brethren. Help us open our eyes, Lord God, that uh, we may always see in response to the opportunities, Lord, that you are giving to us to develop this kind of character in our hearts. The character, Lord, of being merciful, especially to those, Lord God, who have not yet known you as their Savior. Help us, Lord God, to share your word. Lord, it is our desire to serve you by sharing your gospel, your great love, the things that you have done in the cross in order to have for us, Lord God, to have eternal life. Father in heaven, we uh, live up to your hearts. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for being with us. And above all, Lord God, we rejoice that our names are written in heaven. Thank you for everything. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.